Jamie McVicker and I'm the Levy Safety Program Manager with the St. Louis District Office of the Army Corps of Engineers and what I would like to discuss with you today is the Mississippi River and focusing on the river as, a, as an entire system. The Corps of Engineers has focused a lot of effort and attention and manpower on combating the rising river levels of the Mississippi River. Currently it is at historic flood stages and the Corps of Engineers along with the Mississippi River Commission have employed a number of measures to help protect lives and also property. Now throughout this flood, features of the Mississippi River and its tributaries have been operated as an entire system according to a plan that was developed and has been refined over the course of some 80 years. But many question, how does that system work? How are decisions made? And how can we operate the tributaries um, and also do the releases from the reservoirs to help protect the entire system. So I'd like to refer to this map that gives you a graphical depiction of some of the tributaries that drain into the Mississippi River and the states that that runs through. The Mississippi River is originated at its source at Lake Itasca and it runs some 2300 miles southward into the Gulf of Mexico. But keep in mind that over 40%, in fact 41% of the, US, the continental United States is drained by the Mississippi River. And you can't take just the river into context, you need to look at all of those reservoirs and the tributaries and the entire watershed into consideration. In 1879, Congress charged the Mississippi River Commission with creating a comprehensive plan, and not only to facilitate navigation, but also to prevent from destructive flooding. This plan uses the reservoirs, floodways, levees, flood walls, and other flood protection systems to help manage the excess water and also the main stem of the Mississippi River. Put simply, this plan balances the impacts of the flow of the water through the entire watershed, including those attributes such as the tributaries and the reservoirs. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this graphic and put up one that's specifically on the St. Louis district and some of the reservoirs included in our district. So this is a graphical depiction of part of the Mississippi River with some of the tributaries within the St. Louis district. And as those tributaries empty into the Mississippi River, say from Carlisle, Carlisle Lake or Lake Shelbyville or Mark Twain, ultimately that water gets into the Mississippi River and that can cause undue stress on the levee systems and other flood protection systems. The Corps of Engineers Mississippi Valley Division from St. Paul down to New Orleans, each of the districts within the division work together and we work with our neighboring divisions as well to help manage the water levels in the reservoirs and how much water and the timing of the water releases into the tributaries that ultimately get in to the Mississippi River. With rainfalls at 600 to 1,000 percent above average over the last several weeks, the Corps of Engineers held water in a number of our reservoirs. For the St. Louis District, we held water in Lake Shelbyville, Carlisle Lake, and Mark Twain Lake. And on the Ohio River, water was held in Barclay and Kentucky Lakes as well. This helped to prevent undue stress on the flood protection system, both up and downstream, reducing the risk of levee failure and, and saving lives and potentially saving very costly um, damage to property. To further reduce the stress, the Corps of Engineers operated floodways both in Missouri and Louisiana, allowing the river to spread out into its natural floodplain, but in more of a controlled manner. Looking at the Mississippi River watershed as a complete system and making decisions based upon the effects to that system have and will continue to help reduce flooding risk along the Mississippi River. Thank you.